everyone. Welcome to our bedtime chats with the goats at the Two Nichols Farm. I'm Deb, the crazy goat lady. It's a little bit chilly tonight. Can you see my breath? Uh, it's supposed to, I think, get down into like the mid-twenties or so. But it's okay. So I was noticing in my barn here that our walls are shrinking. Yes, Katie, look. Huh, Katie? Our walls are shrinking. Does that mean you're getting taller, Katie? No. No. It just means that the bedding is packing up in here. And, John, that's your friend. Like, these two are, like, best friends. And they're constantly, like, being weird. He's just using her as a step stool right now. Anyway, so, so I was distracted. I get distracted a lot. She is not the climb one. She's not a ladder. Stop. So, the bedding is getting packed up in here. And part of me wants to, like, clean it all out right now. I can't. It's dark. But, um, we let it pack up. Hi, Katie. You are very cute. We let it pack up and get deep during the winter so that... It actually, one, provides a nice squishy, squishy bed for the goats. It's not, like, bouncy squishy, but it's nice and soft. And as it starts to compress, it starts to decompose, and then it creates heat. So, essentially, the goats are sleeping on a heated, soft bed. But my walls are shrinking, and I'm getting closer to the rafters. So, here, at some point in the next few weeks we will probably start cleaning out the barn sections at time that way there's still sections if it gets really cold they can still sleep on the on the pack and then that way too we are just starting the process of cleaning out because at some point I got to get that cleaned out in front of the pens and then get the pens cleaned out I like to do that at least two weeks before we start kidding which would be the beginning of March when we have to get that cleaned out so that I can get it cleaned, I can get it limed, and it can rest without any sort of bedding in it for a little while. Because I like to be able to get some of my girls in at least, oh, sometimes up to five days, depending on how they look before their due date. So, but, yes, the walls are shrinking. Like you can see, like over here by my door, how I have it sort of dug out a little bit so that I can still open the door because of where it is if you look across yeah we're a few inches deep here which like I said is fine hi sprinkles how are you today so I registered sprinkles last night uh, and her name is sprinkles galore yeah that's what I named her sprinkles galore because her nose and her ears have sprinkles look like they're all sprinkly so, and Sadie here, because um, her mom's a Lexus. Woo, her brother's a Lincoln. You are just goofy. And her grandma is a Mercedes. Her great, great, great grandma is a Mercedes. I wanted to name her after a sports car or luxury car of some sort, but her name is already Sadie because she was born on February 29th, which is you know, one of the, in the leap year, but they also call it Sadie Hawkins Day. So I wanted to name her Sadie. So I named her Senna Sadie because McLaren Senna is a really nice car. Can't call her McLaren because that's sort of a boy type. I guess it could be a girl's name, but so I named her Senna Sadie. So she at least has her car name. Oh, and she's still Sadie. Good grief, Sprinkles. Look at her nose. Look how cute that is. Look at that. Look at that frosting on her nose and her ears. Look how cute her ears are. Look. <gasps> I love them. You're just so cute. Yes, you are. And you're very bad. And you're very tall already. Like, I'm not, like, extremely tall I mean, at all. But I'm not extremely short, no matter what George says. But, like, her standing up on her hind legs, and there's still a good distance between us. Because she's getting tall. I know. I love you. You're a good girl. And then you like to chew on stuff. I know. It's very bad and naughty of you. So, yeah. That's good job. 
very long body, which is good. So, that's pretty much that part of the talk. That's a, I really thought about. Hi, I did take Georgie to go get blood work done today. And I went and visited my friend Elena from Black Valley Farm. We had a nice chit chat. We haven't seen each other for a little while. So we went and had a nice chit chat and I got two baskets from her that she sells. She gets them from Ghana in Africa. I think that's right how you say it, Ghana. Yeah, in Africa. M from a lady and her family that weave baskets out of, I think, reed grass. So, very nice. I will take a picture of the brochure of my baskets and I'll post it tomorrow for you so that you can see and have some information if you want to buy some to support a, a family in Ghana. That's a good way of doing it because it's they're earning their money and there is pride in that. I mean, giving people things is is noble. It's nice. It's good. Sometimes people just need to be given gifts and it's nice to give gifts. And sometimes people feel the need to earn. So, like, um, I like to work. So. so I did that this afternoon, which was nice. It was just nice just to sit and chat girl farmer stuff and, you know, all the, I guess, ups and downs of being a, a woman farmer. Which poses a lot of different, sometimes, things than being a guy farmer. I don't think we have to get into all that right now, do we? Mm, probably next time. We'll save that topic for another day. Because somebody, my friend Lori, just sent me a post about uh, being a farmer and being a woman farmer. I'll have to share it with you guys, too. Because it's pretty darn accurate. So, I think that's pretty much, uh, pretty much it for tonight. i got to go make some cookies and some bread. I have somebody who is... And wanting to send a goodie box to another friend of theirs. So that's super fun and exciting. And I, I like doing those kinds of things. So they want some molasses cookies and some sugar sprinkle cookies and some like whole grain bread roll things. So that will be fun. And I made the molasses cookies today. And for some reason they didn't turn out the way that I like them to be like they normally do. So I'm going to see what I can figure out and switch things up. I'm thinking about, I found a new recipe for molasses cookies. Pretty much everything is the same. It's the same recipe that I have, except for they use lard. So I think I'm going to try it, because it sounds like something I think I would like. Instead of using like Crisco or margarine or something, because butter is okay, but butter melts really fast and your cookies tend to, to get a little bit more crispy versus if you use like an artificial shortening, you know, or... Sorry, there's... Blended, don't do that. Um, like Crisco or margarine or shortening of some sort. Hi, there you are. Um, so, I'm going to try, try using the lard and see how it turns out. See if there's like a big flavor difference because the last cookies are one of my favorites and they tend to get me into trouble because I eat way too many of them. Because, you see these girls here, they make really delicious milk. And a lot of times a glass of milk begs for cookies. So, I'm going to try not to eat any cookies tonight. Because I already had a couple today. But I really, really want them. Cookies are really good. Cookies are life. Hi, John. Cookies are everything. Well, not everything, but pretty done close. So, alright, I will hopefully see you guys tomorrow. Thanks for joining me. Don't forget to please subscribe. I'm supposed to say that. I don't know. I guess so. So if you want to, please subscribe. And then that shows YouTube and them that you, you know, like my videos. And I guess then they'll show them to more people. I, I really don't understand any of it. So I'm just going to go now. All right. Good night.